August 27th is the date. The HP Pavilion is the site. Robert Guerrero and Marco Maidana. And here are some of the numbers. And they're comparable numbers. These two guys love to fight. They never turned down a fight. And they never turned down an invitation to be on Chronicle Live either. Robert Guerrero joins us, the ghost from Gilroy, also joined by Ryan Macanana, who, of course, is the CSN Bay Area boxing correspondent. And, uh, Robert, let's talk, first of all, about this fight. First, it's great to see it in the Bay Area. Boxing really coming back into its heyday here in the Bay Area. And, and this is a fight that's, that's really a good television fight and a good spectator fight because neither one of you guys are going to have to go searching for one another. No, this, this is going to be, I think this is, a great fight for the Bay Area, especially the kicking off boxing out here. Myself, Andre, Nonita Donaire. Um, you know, we're all world champions and, uh, you know, bringing the big fights here. I, I think that's what it's about and I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think it should be. And, and the fact is you're three-time world champion, three different weight divisions, first time in the Bay Area that anybody has, has ever Wrong. done that. Five times. Five times. Five times. Shows you what I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I underestimate. And three different, three different weight classes though. And, uh, this is going to, moving up to Junior Walter Way, it's going to be uh, the fourth weight class that will be going for a world championship, and it, I'm excited. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, you, it, you started at featherweight, 126 pounds, and now you're going all the way up to Junior Welterweight. Do you still feel strong even at that weight? Oh, yeah, I feel a lot stronger, faster. Um, at featherweight, I mean, I was, I was a big fighter there. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was a struggle getting there, but, you know, I got the job done, moved on from there, and now, uh, now I'm up 100, uh, 140 pounds. I'm excited. Well, that said, Robert, this is your first fight at junior welterweight, uh, moving up from 135 pounds, lightweight uh, division. Um, with that said, it's undoubted, it's, it's definitely without a doubt that Marcos Maidana's game is going to be to pressure you for 12 rounds, come forward, he's relentless, he's like a bull. They often say the best way to fight a bull is to be a bullfighter. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, I feel like the key is when, uh, not, not when you're trying to outbox him uh, and, and use your jab and your footwork, but when you have to fight him in close quarters, in spurts, uh, how, do you, how do you plan to deal with his style? Um, you know, me and my father, we've been putting together a game plan. Um, you know, it's being smart in the ring, being well prepared for whatever. Um, you know, he has his new trainer, so I know he's going to be different. He's going to bring some different things to the, to the table. And, um, you know, you just got to be ready for everything that comes your way. Um, you know, I can box on the outside. I can fight on the inside. And, um, you know, I just got to stay real tight on my defense, keep my, keep my punches short and tight. And, um, you know, use, use everything that God blessed me with, all my God-given talents, and, uh, you know, I think when I do that, uh, I'll be victorious. Fine. Hey, how hard is it uh, to do that, though? I mean, when you got a guy who comes at you who's a brawler, that's the kind of fight he wants, how hard is it to fight your fight rather than his fight? Um, you know, it, it is tough. It's tough um, more on the mental aspect of it is, is keeping your mind, you know, on your game not getting off track, uh, staying focused, and, and doing what you got to do in the ring. A lot of times when, uh, um, you know, like they say, pressures bust, pressure bust pipes. And it is true. If, uh, if you can't keep it together, the pressure will bust you. And uh, that's when guys start folding and they get off their game plan. You know, I, I want to talk a little bit but both to, you, to Robert and to Ryan about what's going on in the sport of boxing in general. I thought the fight, the heavyweight fight in Hamburg the other night probably set the sport back about 10 years. And yet everybody looks at the heavyweight division as defining the sport of boxing. And right now, of course, all of us are pretty close to it here. The better fights are, are your weight a little bit less than you, going down to flyweight and maybe, maybe going up to, to middleweight. But that's where all the great fights are, not in the heavyweight division. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, like, a, it's like it was in the 70s, the 80s. It was all in the lightweights. You get a lot of lightweight fighters that are good. And, um, you know, that's the way it is now. All of us lightweights, I mean, are, you know, prime champions coming out, swinging, putting up great fights. Um, I think personally, you know, Champions got to start fighting champions. All those fighters just got to start making it happen and stop ducking and running. And, um, you know, that's the kind of fighter I am. I'm a throwback fighter where, you know, I'll fight anybody, whoever, whenever, wherever. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I moved up to 140, and um, a lot of people were saying, uh, you know, you, you don't want to test the waters at 140. You don't want to dab your toe and get, you know, some, exp you know, get, get some comfortable in the ring at 140. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to jump in head first, even if the water's shallow. But I, I want to fight the best, and, and that's the way I am. I want to fight the best fighters, and, and you know, as you see, Marcus Madonna is one of the toughest guys out there, and, and that's what I'm going to do is get in there with him. There's no way around it. That fight was a debacle. Um, 
and to, to be honest, the focus of attention to the sport has moved to the lower weight classes. Uh, obviously, the two main cash cows of the sport are Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, as evidenced by uh, you know the pay-per-view numbers. But at the same time, we've got we've got young fighters, we've got young blood coming up. We've got a guy like Robert here. If he can somehow uh, come away with this fight with a victory, that puts him in line for big money fights at 140 pounds with Amir Khan and Tim Bradley. And if he can somehow emerge from this division as a top dog, just seven pounds north, you've got Manny Pacquiao, you've got Floyd Mayweather. And the one thing about Robert is that I've known him never to duck a challenge. And I'm sure he'd be up for something like that. Well, man, of course, Manny Pacquiao is the cash cow right now. Everybody wants him. I'm sure you'd take him tomorrow if you could get oh, him. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's the fight uh, you take in a heartbeat. I mean, you hear, hey, you want to fight Manny Pacquiao? You're jumping in. Hey, Where do I sign? <laughs> I, I, I want to give you some props before we jump away to The last time I saw you, we were, in, we were in Las Vegas for the Boxing Writers Dinner where you were given the Bill Crawford mm -hmm. Award for Courage and what that's all about. I know a lot of folks out there know the story, but, but uh, your wife, Casey, uh, came down with a case of, of leukemia and there was some question about how it was going to go. And you were the champion of the world at the time and you said, I'm going to back off from this and take care of business at home. And uh, I'll tell you what, you're a champion for that alone. You know, um, you know, I, I think uh, just being raised the right way, you know, being a man and, um, you know, sticking to your priorities and, uh, you know, family's everything. I think family's everything. And then, um, you know, that's what I did was, uh, you know, make sure that I was there to support my wife and, and be there at all times uh, as she went through uh, the bone marrow transplant. So, um, you know, I, I just... Uh, you know, it's nice to get recognized for, um, you know, things you do outside of boxing also. And we're happy to report she's right here, in fact, in our studio, and uh, cancer is in remission, and uh, all is well with Robert Guerrero. Robert, I wish you very well. Thank you. Good luck in that fight. Thanks, Ryan, for being with us. A couple of years ago, who was Pacquiao? Now he's, you know, the greatest of all time.
comes the champ, here comes the pack, yeah Here comes the king, they call him Pac-Man Hall of Fame represent Philippine Islands Worldwide, he's the greatest of all time Modern day icon, the hope of the nation Third world hero, conquer the first world Epitome of strength and humility Manny Pacquiao walks the talk, he's reality Here comes the champ, here comes the Pacquiao Here comes the king, they call him Pac-Man Hall of Fame represent Philippine Islands Worldwide, he's the greatest of all time Here comes the champ, here comes the Pacquiao Here comes the king, they call him Pac-Man Hall of Fame represent Philippine Islands Worldwide, he's the greatest of all time Floyd Mayweather made his statement on a podium this morning Saying I'm back and I'm still the best Manny Pacquiao makes his statement right here in the ring He's knocking out Ricky Hatton And his trainer Freddie Roach predicted it would not go